This clip of the Texas Bucket List is brought to you by Spirit of Texas Bank and Slovacek Sausage. Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything there is to see, do, and experience right here in the Lone Star State. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and this week we head to Waco to try a tasty beverage that Texans have been sipping on for well over 100 years. You see, it all started in a pharmacy here, and it's grown to a worldwide phenomena. That's why we thought taking a sip at the Dr. Pepper Museum would be worth a stop on the Texas Bucket List. When it comes to Waco, there are a plethora of places you can visit in the belt buckle of the Bible Belt. And one of those places involves a beverage that Texans know and love. Dr. Pepper is synonymous with Texas. Hi, welcome to the Dr. Pepper Museum. How are you today? Now, it's been said that drinking a Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered, but the fact of the matter is it was created by a pharmacist. Dr. Pepper was actually invented in Waco on the corner of 4th and Austin Avenue at the Old Corner Drugstore. Joy Summer Smith is the associate director at the museum dedicated to a drink with a long history. We know that it was invented by Dr. Charles Alderton. He was the pharmacist at the Old Corner Drugstore and he worked for Wade Morrison, who's the owner. And Mr. Morrison is credited for naming the drink Dr. Pepper. Um, how he came up with that, Mr. Morrison told a variety of stories, um, so we don't particularly know the truth. The most popular legend about naming it is that he named it for the father of a girl that he had fallen in love with. And who knew so many people would fall in love with the liquid known for its 23 flavors? 23 flavors that only a few know about. Grape, only five to six people know the entire formula. So you won't find that in the Dr. Pepper Museum, but you will find lots of interesting artifacts and displays in this building that the doctor moved to back in 1906. So this is the old corner drugstore. Okay, so a recreation of Dr. Alderson's pharmacy that he created Dr. Pepper. Yes. Okay. Here you'll get an idea of all the things Dr. Alderson had at his disposal when creating his concoction. They had a wonderful amount of flavors um, to pick from, many of which we don't even have around today anymore. Um, things like uh, grapefruit or coffee or tea could flavor your soft drink. In this building, they actually did one that was called celery champagne that was flavored uh, with celery. So pharmacies were a little different back then because it wasn't just where you went for medicine, it was more than that. Well, it, the soda fountain come out of, comes out of a tradition thinking that um, soft drinks were good for you, that they could cure just about whatever might ill you. But why listen to me talk about it when you can hear from the man himself? Well, sort of. So this is Dr. Alderton, huh? Yeah. He, uh, he will tell you a lot about what it was like to invent Dr. Pepper. Very neat. I've been given lots of credit for creating a new soda flavor. These days it's called Dr. Pepper. But back in the beginning, everyone just called it a Waco. From bottles that date way back to the original well that the water for Dr. Pepper was drawn from, there is about as many surprises in the museum as flavors in the fountain drink. We don't uh, make our Dr. Pepper with the water anymore, um, <laughs> but it's still there for visitors to see and do, and the kids absolutely love it when they come through. But the part most people love involves an ice cold beverage. We've got um, free samples for every adult that comes through uh, the museum. We made a beeline for the soda fountain where we ran into Shaman Alexander, the resident soda jerk. <laughs> Yeah, no, I like for a soda nice guy. So jerk seems a little derogatory, don't you think? If you're dishing out free drinks, I like think I'm a cool guy. Yes, yes you are. I think I've earned my keep here. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part of the tour where you have to make some serious decisions, but we're here for just one of them. It's good. We have root beer, big red, dark pepper, diet dog pepper, and seven up here. And of course, at Dot Pepper Museum, we gotta get dog pepper. Before Shaman gets started on the mixology he's best at. I make the best stuff here. Drinks, floats, shakes, I make it all, man. You should know this soda nice guy really enjoys his job. It's pretty easy, actually. <laughs> and I get to make free drinks all the time. I like it. Now let's make that Dr. Pepper. So I'm gonna fill it up right here with some syrup. About a third of the way here. Just like that. The ice down there near the bottom. 
Come here and fill it right up. It's like shame and shames all other soda nice guys with his skills. And mix it all together. Then, after patiently waiting, we get a taste. We have Dr. Pepper. Cheers. Cheers, man. Oh, that's refreshing. And this concoction is incredible. It's not a cola, it's not a root beer, it's something much, much more. To actually tell you the truth, I don't drink a lot of soda, but I do like Dr. Pepper. It's really cool to give it to him for the first time. To see it, it's like, oh, it's awesome, I yeah, can't made that. <laughs> Getting a chance to enjoy a fresh made Dr. Pepper and learn about the history of this piece of Texas makes visiting the Dr. Pepper Museum a satisfying stop on the Texas bucket list. It was more than I expected. It was great. The history of it all. I mean, this is how business was supposed to be started and how it's supposed to grow. I really enjoyed that part, and he was a firm believer in free enterprise, which I think is somewhat disappearing in our modern day America. Definitely a Waco original, and I, it's family friendly, and that's, you know, those are things that are often hard to find. Oh, this is like a heritage. It's like what nearly made Texas itself. I mean, you don't really have Texas without Dr. Pepper, especially around here, shoot. You don't go anywhere without it. <laughs>